And now, distinguished guests, the next panel is also no less important than the previous topic. It takes up the social dimensions of AI practices. Suleyman Barada from Global Innovation Institute is moderating the panel. I would like to invite Mr. Barada to the stage. Mina İlke Özdemirtaş from Up School, Ali Musavi from Brunel University, London, and Chitra Majumdar from Our Scare Risk Lab are discussing in this session. We would like to welcome all our panelists and moderators. Please give them all applause for Hi. this Hi. session. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And welcome. This is the last session. So thank you so much. Okay. And please, Mr. Barat. Is it working? Can you hear me well? Great. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm so impressed with the level of uh, attendance uh, throughout the event. Uh, really, uh, people don't seem to be uh, tired of listening to uh, the talks. Uh, we're going to try to keep it also informative and uh, entertaining. The, uh, uh, this particular uh, panel is, is really a... Uh, it builds upon the previous two panels in a way that it also addresses the, uh, the AI topic, but through a totally different uh, lens, through the social lens. Now, we know that uh, AI, there's no question about the, uh, the development of AI and how it helped uh, a lot of commercial enterprises pursue and, and venture into uh, uh, you know, new uh, commercial ventures, uh, new products and, and offerings and services, and, and financial services is no exception, really. And within the fintech space, AI seems to be uh, uh, being positioned uh, really very well. But how about the, the social uh, impact that AI is bringing into uh, communities, societies, and, uh, and the world as a, as a whole. So that's, that's exactly the angle that we're going to be focusing on on this particular panel with three distinguished uh, uh, speakers. Uh, each of my fellow panelists will, uh, will cover the topic through yet another uh, you know, uh, angle. Uh, uh, of course, um, uh, I'm going to borrow this. Uh, <laughs> Page. So Mina, Mina is going to look into the AI through the talent development and the learning uh, angle, whereas uh, Dr. Ali, uh, being an academician and a, uh, a, a practitioner innovator, uh, is going to also address the topic through the academic uh, angle and the entrepreneurial angle, whereas uh, Chitro, uh, who is a, a well-versed uh, risk management uh, uh, practitioner is going gonna, is gonna, to uh, highlight and, and shed the light on uh, the, uh, the risks that, that are associated with the applications of AI within uh, the, the commercial space or the social development space. So the, the outcome of this panel uh, that I would love to achieve is, uh, is for you to learn what impact, what social impact AI could bring into our societies, either directly or indirectly. Uh, uh, indirectly by um, being caused by the, the commercial applications of, uh, of AI. So what social impact these commercial applications of AI uh, uh, could bring into our societies. And by uh, uh, social development use cases that are purely leveraging AI for social development. So we'll look, at, we'll look at, at both words, and we'll try to contrast between, uh, between the two. I'm going to be starting the conversation with, uh, with Mina. And I would like to ask you, really, Mina, from, uh, from your point of view, as, uh, as a professional who works within the, uh, the work of upskilling and talent development, uh, uh, how are you seeing AI being adopted uh, by uh, uh, you know, aspiring professionals? Mm -hmm. And how are uh, the uh, education institutions mm -hmm. uh, providing such, uh, uh, you know, such education mm -hmm. to those aspiring professionals? Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. And it's great to be here. So I would like to start uh, to quote um, Y Combinator founder Paul Graham. 
he says that AI will magnify the great difference in knowledge, those eager to learn or uh, those who are not eager to learn. So uh, this statement highlights that uh, how we work and how we must and adapt uh, to the current uh, technological advancement. So um, I'm co-founder of Upsukul. Upsukul is a startup that exists to close both gender and talent gap in the tech sector. So, so far we trained more than 2,000 women in different tech roles, like machine learning engineers, data scientists, mobile developers, web developers. And the roles that we trained uh, are graduates. Actually, we always get these insights from companies, which workforce they are looking for, what is the demand for the workforce. And now uh, it is changing because of the AI. And um, just like Paul Graham says, actually, adaptability is very critical. Mm -hmm. So AI is changing uh, the work that we know. So. This is not just changing about the how we do, but also about the job roles uh, and how the skills that uh, define them. So those will be um, can, those will can adapt those can adapt themselves into AI. So there will be in the at the forefront of a new uh, dynamic new job market. So I highly find this uh, critical. But on the other hand, the proactive response. Uh, should not be to dismiss new technological advancements and mm -hmm. saying that, okay, AI, AI will not replace every human task. Okay, thank you. Uh, but on the other hand, we should say that, okay, I will use this AI tool to enhance my capabilities and achieve more. So we need to embrace it. Uh, exactly. But also there is a concern about this. I mean, also people are afraid of uh, their future uh, jobs, their future incomes. And uh, at that point, uh, I believe that the leaders in technology, they should uh, also be careful about the society. Uh, because we know that, okay, uh, things are very fast. And before this panel, also the other speakers mentioned the same thing. But uh, the rest of the majority is uh, being left behind. Uh, so. Uh, we have, there are lots of lessons to be learned from history. For instance, during the Industrial Revolution, we transitioned from horses to cars. Maybe some uh, lost their jobs. But on the other hand, there are many uh, jobs that uh, occurred at that point. And I'm not talking about just production line, but also uh, sales, marketing, business, uh, back office things. Exactly the same cycle. Exactly the same cycle. And um, right now, the healthy uh, technological advancement like this bring about this similar pattern that, okay, it disrupts, but also it expands other job roles, other uh, possibilities, um, exciting possibilities for the society. So I totally believe that uh, tech leaders will sh should consider this. And lastly, I would like to point out, uh, I would like to touch on the um, AI impact on gender equality. So AI is providing an amazing opportunity for us in terms of um, the tech, Women uh, in tech is very few, uh, we mm. all know. It's even 10% in Turkey. So right now, while we have this AI movement, we should definitely include women to this movement. So we are very committed to, uh, to this cause as obstacle. So we have different training programs, including AI for women only. For instance, last night we launched our new program with Google, Build with AI, uh, again, women only. And also we will have another program with Akbank, uh, which is called AI First Developers. So that providing, uh, so by doing so, we will provide new opportunities, new, new career opportunities for women, but also we will bring this AI advancement uh, to women and they are not getting left behind. And so by, by raising your hands, women in the, uh, in the audience, do you think, do you think that AI is a, is a compelling uh, career path? Women <laughs> in the room. <laughs> okay, so, so and I'm going to get back to you with, uh, with very few hands yeah. that were raised. Uh, uh, how do you see it happening uh, as, a, as, a, as an education provider? Mm -hmm. Do you see a lot of women being attracted into the, mm -hmm. do, the AI domain as future developers mm -hmm. or future uh, uh, practitioners? Mm -hmm. um, definitely there is so, uh, some good movement, but also we should show some good best 
uh, cases, I mean, good role models. Okay. So our aim is to uh, develop tech role models uh, in the world as obstacles. So okay. to point out this, uh, we have different graduates working in different companies like Amazon, Ford Motor Company and other companies. So we are especially putting these role models into the world mm -hmm. so that the other uh, female candidates, they can inspire from them. So there is a good movement, but, uh, but there are lots of things to do. Yeah. So, so they will come to the realization that really AI is a worth, is a skill yeah, that is worth exactly. learning mm -hmm. uh, and, and applying. Thank you, uh, Mina, for the uh, for the insightful intervention. Uh, Dr. Ali, uh, being really a well-rounded uh, academician, professor, and entrepreneur, uh, uh, what's your take on the developments of AI and how uh, it is going to af it is already uh, affecting uh, societies and lives and and and, and the outlook of that. Uh, uh, you know, looking f uh, farther and further into the future. Ah, gosh, I'm used to four-hour lectures, so <laughs> <laughs> putting all this in a couple of minutes is difficult for me. But um, as a systems engineer in the last 25 years of my career, um, I've tried to understand what is happening in the world. And uh, if you go back to the uh, Aristotelian, Newtonian uh, definition of systems, if we call systems a set of interacting elements that seek a common goal as the foundation. Uh, Mechanis interpreted the world into a set of uh, physical items that sum of the total made the whole system. So if you uh, take one part of that system off, the whole thing will collapse. Mm -hmm. It will not be a, a system. The major challenge, oh, it, it went for uh, uh, millennia, actually, that idea. The main challenge came through the Darwinian uh, analysts or, or specialists, and there the adaptive systems came into mind. So the systems that are interacting with their environment and change in time to, to, to conform to the changes. But these were passive adaptive systems. So first sensed and then tried, and it took a lot of time to, mm. to adapt. So, uh, you can see from that uh, pic uh, picture I've, I've put there. Indeed. Uh, and obviously a lot of them died. The new generation, which is the sustainable systems, this comes through the turn of the 20th, uh, 21st century, is a system which is capable of um, active learning, aggressive prediction, in innovative and inventive, and mastering complexity. These systems, that the closest you can get as human beings, which is the top of the apex of, of evolution, uh, they not only uh, adapt to the environment, but they influence their environment to their, to, their, to their advantage. And this is where we are. And this is where AI in the future is going to be. So I'm very optimistic about AI. Okay. I wasn't an AI man. I was a control man, okay. or a uh, control person. But um, I've, I've switched into artificial intelligence because I didn't have the real one, so I had to seek the artificial one. <laughs> but in, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in reality, what artificial intelligence is, is to bring down certainty, to bring collective thinking, to put things together out of silos. And that's where artificial intelligence is going to shine and it's going to help. We have to change. I'm sorry, I, I've gone on to lecture now. Um, <laughs> just one more thing. Sure. We have to change. I've, I've been in, in, in academia for 25 years. And before that, I studied myself. And there is a, a gap I'm feeling, and it's a danger. And that is our new generation of students, most of them, are forgetting how to learn. They are trying to process information. And we are helping them by using too much of software and, and easy, uh, you know, making things easy for them. A lot of them are losing the skills of learning. We have to change the academic uh, curricula to enable time for people to learn. This fast movement is dangerous. That's the only danger I see. Right. Thank you. Uh, and, and thank you. Uh, and do you see, do you see uh, uh, institutions that are responsible for really training the future generations? 
uh, are they moving at the right speed? Uh, are they really uh, embracing this uh, wave of uh, uh, uncertainty and... <laughs> I don't know your my, objective. I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed your, to say Your objective these opinion. Yes, I'm going to have all my <laughs> off colleagues. Off the record. <laughs> yes, off the record. Please don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, well, I think the problem is that a lot of universities are turning into shops. Mm -hmm. We are turning into what the customer requires and needs. And that's the danger. Because we're trying to quickly adapt adapt and put these guys out of the, out of the system by, by making them to order of the business and, and industry. So, yeah. no, we haven't. We, we're okay. quickly adapting the other way around. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm a bit worried about that. So, and there's responsibility really. We need to sit back, uh, get the governments off universities, let uh -huh. them do what they used to do, okay. and that was don't pressurize them to satisfy students. Because there's also a backlog on policy making. They can go exactly. and do policy making exactly. while, while education and institutions can really uh, make the, the right progression. Exactly. The pressure the is too much. They are asking universities to make the... Universities are not... Uh, they're not shops. They're not, we're right. not, we don't flip burgers. Uh -huh. So more f uh, burgers we flip, more money we make. It's yeah. not that. It's yeah. not about flipping burgers. It's all about nurturing creating time, allowing people to, to, to launch it. We, we're reducing the time to, of education, two years, three years now. Whilst a lot of us have been in education, the old generation have been in education for 10 or so to get a PhD and okay. so on and so forth. So there's so education and fast food that's being offered? We, we, we, yes, that yes, to be taken food. out of the diet. Yes, <laughs> there's the danger of this fast food mentality going okay. into education. <laughs> So All right, thank in, order you very to much. Take, in order to take from here is the yeah, right exactly. point of learning because mm. in order to have a, the possibility of ethics, mm. we have to also create a kind of landscape of possibility of learning. So uh, I can tell you a little bit about my experience, um, although my slide will come in a very technical format, but don't get derailed with that. So I was a very successful quant uh -huh. in Canary Wharf, London. Uh, when when I came into that field uh, or uh, practicing or the writing some equations by myself, uh, before that I was just managing my team of quant, getting high salary and everything. But that time there was no craze of like a AI um, uh, wisdom or reasoning or knowledge based is upcoming. But what is fashionable to AI today? It I studied in my, when I was in India in bachelor degree in a subject of a statistics. So it's a, like a fashionable in, in a, like a, once you have the data, huge number of data, you get it as a, a kind of a small heterogeneity test or multicolonary test, and then you analyze as a, a decision mechanism or some kind of forecasting. Mm. Today, what is happening, the ethics is not solving any problems. Ethics is asking questions. And there, I think, when you talk about the chat GPT, when you talk about uh, uh, chat GPT is very later form, but other, other 2016, 17, mm -hmm. when I got an uh, invitation from European Commission that could you please bring your mathematics, because my, my thesis was long time ago, right. was in a uh, random variable. When is, you have a something popping up in the sky or somewhere, as an exogenous random variable, come to your system and disrupting your system, like a corona, how, yeah. how, how we see the corona. So how you filter those informations, uh -huh. the de facto of the informations, or like in the informations which are actually creating bias of your decision mechanism. There, I presented in, in European Commission, that got a little bit viral and everything, and then, I again started to doing mathematics with the help of Professor Freddy Delbain. Why these all pictures? Because human judgment also misled long time ago. Today we will talk about 1984, but, but uh, when they prepared something as a proof of some kind of question, it was also somehow with a 
conflict of wisdom, con conflict of decision mechanism, it got derailed. It got uh, some kind of ethical tests. There, I bring, so 2000, say, Delban Majumdar, if you see that theory, that theory is as actually bias test, test of a bias theory. Right. Why that is? That is be because of the, if you have an art artificial intelligence system, or any decision mechanism comes from that system, how you filter that where the that decision, like a loan, approving a loan or um, approving some job application or something, how you create that certain class of people, certain section of people will not be terminated from that uh, whole pool, pool of reasoning or pool of uh, uh, possibilities. So we solved some kind of problem that is called independent problem appro approximation. Mm -hmm. What is independent problem? I don't, I, I, I see the uh, clock is <laughs> ticking, but independent problem is just like, in COVID, you saw many data or many informations are co correlated. But one information you will find, which is not correlated, but that is a cause of spreading the virus or mm -hmm. something. That independent information system we are bringing first to identify and then to mitigate. So large language models say I, I developed something called Omega, mm -hmm. Omega Square. Omega is nothing but a chat GPT. Okay. You, you upload all the documents and everything, and that you can chat with the document. But here the catch is, with the help of the uh, mathematical equation, that you can, f if the document is really, really defect or some kind of biased, mm. You, if you then ask the this, outcome will be outcome uh, will be un, unbiased. Uh, it's in stealth mode. I didn't launch yet, but it will be upcoming. Right. Uh, Chitro, just to summarize on the ethical part, uh, and, and what's your take on uh, uh, on the on the general uh, outlook of, of AI development and, and how much of it is being ethical and how much of it is is being unethical? And and do you think do you believe that uh, uh, taking ethics into consideration by design uh, is, a, is something that slows down the developments? Because one would not want to really jeopardize the progress mm -hmm. of, AI and I, what, and of AI and what it would bring to the table to humanity yes. just because you, know, you want to slow down for some ethical considerations. How do you, what, what's the, uh, the right balance between so, the two? So the, there are two, two answers. One is very simple. Mm -hmm. Like ethics is personal. My ethics might not be completely indifferent with your ethics, or different with your, your ethics. Right. So that needs to be like, a, if we have a, and definitely ethics cannot be the based on the rules, rule based. So moment you develop an algorithm and you put the rules and conditions, mm. that means there is no ethics, or there is a limited of ethics. Okay. So ethics, that's why at, at the beginning I said that asking questions, not solving any problems. Mm -hmm. So if you develop a kind of system or some kind of chatbot or whatever, try to be not rule-based, but with the reasoning. What mm. kind of reasoning? In mathematics, I can talk hours on that. Right. Because in mathematical, some, uh, say, softwares, they're talking our fundamentals is not the front end. Fundamentals is, is very deep. Right. It's a very, very uh, important statistical models and uh, the mathematical models are used. There, we, we need to t check for model validation, say, for instance. Right. And that could be the ethical. So if you have a central bank, so say, for, say for instance, I was discussing with you before, yeah. before uh, the show that, you know, the interest rate is causing huge problem globally. And banks, they don't know when interest rate will be cut in Fed or, or ECB or wherever. But I can tell you the hedging, say for instance, hedging risk or when we do hedging, because in order to minimize the uncertainties after the cut or uh, rise, the, uh, rise the rates and whatever situations. So if cut is tomorrow, today is the best time of hedging because banks want to make money as well. But if I start hedging today, and interest rate doesn't cut, get cuts or, or whatever situation, then I bleed. My all money, the banks are, would be in a more problematic. So that's why I'm saying that make a framework 
that framework will give you a scenarios so be thoughtful yeah of course of okay course. okay uh, Viran, uh, back to you on uh, what uh, what do you think are the um, uh, the use cases of AI within the uh, mm -hmm. uh, the social development space mm -hmm. Uh, like we've, everybody knows about the potential of AI in the commercial space, and fintech is one application. But what is, you know, what's the progress being that's being made on AI within the social mm -hmm. development space? Uh, like direct use cases of AI mm -hmm. for social development. Mm -hmm. uh, our domain is education, so I would like to give an example of education. Mm -hmm. So, in App School, we provide online trainings, mm -hmm. but um, until six months ago, we haven't provided personal uh, learning reports. Okay. But right now, with these AI improvements and uh, these updates, we can able to we are able to provide this personalized uh, learning. Okay. So this is an amazing opportunity for Indeed. not just for women but for humankind. But also, I would um, give uh, I would emphasize that not just for online trainings like our business but also the public schools mm -hmm. uh, they should somehow integrate this per per personalized learning uh, with the help of teachers so that's why the teachers are quite important here i'm talking about k-12 in this case but just like you mentioned for the academia and the university as well i mean just briefly uh, personalization of education is a great opportunity for all of us but not just for k-12 or um, I don't know, university, but also for adult learning, because adult learning seems like a huge topic and uh, everyone is very excited to be upskilled, mm -hmm. but no one wants to be upskilled. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> this is a huge problem. Yes. So maybe this personalization, uh, personalization will, help will help this. Motivate people into exactly. becoming. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, this is a great use case because it, it's not the, the, uh, the impact of that is not limited to, uh, uh, to uh, leveling up the education of societies, but also to creating economic uh, uh, outcomes as well. Uh, Dr. Ali, what's your take on, on that same uh, question? Uh, direct use cases of AI within the social development uh, space. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up the session with that. Yes, exactly. I have one minute, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I Basically, think with a, with a minute, with one minute the, bonus. Yes, most yeah. of the uh, cases that I work uh, in is, is in engineering and finding engineering solutions for structural integrity, for uh, water solutions, wa uh, creating clean water, wastewater treatment, water plants, um, intelligent aircrafts, and, and auto autonomous vehicles, and so on and so forth. Right. And to me, what is the impact on so society is higher health, better safety, uh, better prosperity, uh -huh. comfort. Uh, this is the uh, this social is, bottom line. These are the social <laughs> bottom lines. You need clean water around the world. And you have to do it collectively. You have to work together. We need to stop the climate changing. We need to stop it now. And we need to promote the technologies that are doing that. And there AI is instrumental. Absolutely, for they use are cases instrumental within those domains. Because the society can only can only survive the future if the technology comes to the aid to help and promote those those solutions. And we are one of the problems. I, I think there's another talk later on about this next tomorrow. I think is uh, we are having problems with financial and economic uh, models. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not an economist, I'm not a finance person. This is the first time I've attended a <laughs> finance <laughs> conference. Yeah, you're doing but well. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after all of you. And the reason is that I, we have a lot of green solutions, a lot of sustainable solutions that uh, are in the most advanced uh, uh, technologies, modern technologies, AI-driven and they are hitting TRL 6, technology readiness level of 6. That means proof of concept, and they die. We need to change that. We need our finance people to change, our economists to change their mentality. It's not only making money, it's surviving prospering, and that is uh, making sure prospering. that you, you have air to breathe if you have money. It's not enough to have money in the bank. Sorry, I went Thank you very much. Rant. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't close this session based, uh, better than uh, Dr. <laughs> Ali. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and uh, thank you for the panelists. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. <laughs>